Today I want to talk with you about a man with headache. The history of the present illness. John is a 20-year-old male presenting to the emergency department complaining of headache for two days. According to his wife, he has not been acting himself since the headache started. The patient appears exhausted. No previous headaches. One week ago, he was treated for a sinus infection, and six years ago, he had his spleen removed due to abdominal injuries from a motor vehicle accident. He denies drugs and alcohol use, and he has no known medication allergies. The review of system. He currently has headache and feels very warm. There is no weakness in his legs, arms, or arms, but he feels tired. He has bilateral eye pain. There is no facial pain, nose pain, ear pain, or mouth pain. He has pain and stiffness in his neck. There is no chest pain, no cough or shortness of breath, and no abdominal pain. The physical examination. The vital signs reveal the following. The blood pressure is 130 over 75. The heart rate is 125. The temperature is 38.5 degrees Celsius or 101 degrees Fahrenheit. The respiratory rate is 22. The oxygen saturation is 97% and the finger stick is 190 milligrams per deal. The physical examination continues. The neurologic examination reveals the patient who is alert and oriented times one, moving all four extremities with no sensory deficits. The deep tendon reflexes are two plus in both the upper and lower extremities with down going of the toes. The head shows that there is normal cephalic without any scalp tenderness. On the eye shows that the pupils are equal, round, and reactive to light, and the extraocular muscles are intact with a visual acuity of 2020. On the neck, there is nuchal rigidity. The lungs show bilateral air entry with no abnormal sounds. The heart indicates an S1 and S2 with no abnormal sounds, and the abdomen is soft, non-tender with positive bowel sounds. The labs are significant for a WBC of 20,000 with a significant left shift. The bands are 10%. The rest of the labs are normal. So we have a patient with headache, nuchal rigidity, fever, altered mental status, and leukocytosis. Here are some questions for you. Number one. What is the most likely diagnosis? What test would you order next? What test is most specific for the diagnosis? And what is the treatment of choice for this condition? Let's deal with each question. The most likely diagnosis is bacterial meningitis. The classic triad of fever, altered mental status, and nuchal rigidity is, present, is present in only 44% to 50% of patients. Almost all patients will have headache plus one of the above signs. Koenig and Bradinsky signs have very poor sensitivity and should not be used to exclude bacterial meningitis. The second question. The second question has to do with the test that should be ordered next, and the test should be a head CT. The head CT should be ordered, and it was ordered, and there were no mass, shift, bleed, or edema that was revealed. The next question is the specific test that is specific to the diagnosis of bacterial meningitis. 
The cornerstone of diagnosis of bacterial meningitis is the analysis of the cerebral spinal fluid. A head CT should always be performed prior to a lumbar puncture. The indication for head CT are as follows. Number one, a patient who has altered mental status. Number two, a patient with focal neurologic deficits. Number three, a patient who is immunocompromised. Number four, a patient with central nervous system disease. Number five, a patient who has new onset seizures. Number six, a patient in whom papillary edema has been seen. And number seven, a patient with evidence of head trauma. The analysis of the cerebral spinal fluid. When the cerebral spinal fluid is analyzed, you're looking for cell count to be over a thousand. And that is if bacterial meningitis is involved. If bacterial meningitis is the diagnosis, the cell count will be over a thousand. The gram stain will identify bacterial organisms in 80% of the time. Protein will be elevated. Glucose will be decreased. In terms of fungal causes of meningitis, India ink will be positive. Persons with tuberculous meningitis will have a positive mm. acid fast test and the lactate will be elevated. The treatment of choice for meningitis is determined by the organism. The most common organisms to cause meningitis in adults are Neisseria meningitis and strep pneumonia. A third generation cephalosporin like ceftriaxone and cefataxim should be used. It crosses the blood brain barrier. Vancomycin should also be used. Patients older than 50 years, alcoholic patients, and immunocompromised patients should also be given ampicillin in addition to a third generation and vancomycin. And finally, family members and close contacts should also receive prophylaxis typically with a fluoroquinolone or rifampin. Clinical pearls. The moment meningitis is suspected, blood cultures should be collected. Antibiotics should never be given before blood cultures and should not be delayed because of head CT. When needed, head CT should be performed before lumbar puncture. Ceftriaxone and vancomycin are ideal an ampicillin may be added for persons older than 50 years old, alcoholics, or immunocompromised. Prophylaxis with fluoroquinolone or rifampin may be used. Meningitis should be suspected in any person with headache, fever, altered mental status, and nuchal rigidity. In the case of our patient, he had headache, fever, altered mental status, and leukocytosis. In physical exam, he had nuchal rigidity. It was significant also that our patient had a recent sinus infection, which was treated, but he had a past surgical history of splenectomy. And that was also a risk factor for um, subsequent infection. He was, however, treated with appropriate antibiotics and did well. Well, this brings us to the end of this case. I wish you well. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Good night.